Welcome back to Wealth 2019, where Mascard is devoted to helping maintain a diverse and inclusive community that engages all League of Legends gamers and fans. The fans of the day are Carla and Rosa from Alicante, Spain, who received World Scarves and Beanies. Maybe they'll get more to celebrate later as their beloved Fnatic are fighting for a spot in the semi-finals. That's a big maybe right now because Fnatic just lost game one. As many of you know, I have a puppy. I don't like cats and I don't want to see more cats. This is a personal bias. Way to make it all about you. To, well, I'm here and I'm talking. I got the mic. I like cats. <laughs> what would you guys like to see with Draw Fnatic? They have side selection, they went blue side, and they've already banned the Kiana. So we expect FPX to ban Zaya because it actually puts Reckless in a weird spot where he might need to show, at least for Worlds, a new AD carry that can then unlock a more playmaking support uh, from Hillisang. Garen Yumi is a lot harder for Fnatic to play in this matchup. I think Kaiser is kind of the one we're all waiting for from Reckless. Does this get locked in? Reckless has played Kaiser once during the summer split. It was a win. He went 7, 2, and 11. He has not played it at the World Championship yet, and it is locked in to applause in Spain. And it's so important for the series because if they didn't take it here, FX would have locked into Kaiser, forced Fnatic into something like Ezreal maybe, and AD Carriage is not as strong as Kaiser right now, or into Garen Yumi again, which does not always favor Fnatic. Completely agree. They had to take it away here. FPX following up very quickly, though, uh, with the Gragas this time for Tien. This is one of his biggest playmaking champions. It definitely signals that they want to have a similar game plan to what we saw last time around. And we'll see if they can actually get some flex picks for their solo lanes or leave them to round two. This is. Actually, a flex pick because they do play it mid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's funny enough. With the Nautilus. Um, they, it's also a takeaway, so you don't give Nautilus Kaiser, obviously, on the other side. Ooh, instead, Varus. They're going to see if they can actually win this bot lane pretty hard. They do have the possibility to counter pick support as well to guarantee a super strong early matchup and then try and shut down Fnatic's bot lane. I also really like Varus for FBX because it gives them CC inherently in the bottom lane. So if they send people down there, yep. uh, Tian, Donbi, start going, they can start up these fights themselves and have plenty of things at their disposal. Plus Varus, very strong lane phase that they can try and work off of. And next uh, pick here for Fnatic, kind of obvious with the GP, was banned away in the last game. It is one of the best blind picks you can take. And this, to me, just screams a bot lane focus game from both teams. Because now you have GP on top side with his ulti. You have already Varus locked in on the other side, who, by the way, sucks against GP ulti. He literally hates his life when he gets GP ulti because he cannot do anything. And you just add another Twisted Fate ultimate on it as well. It's Globals on we Globals here for Fnatic. Everybody's got access. Well, if you see a bunch of access, you want some denial, Deficio. Tom Kench will be there. Definitely has been the recipient of a lot of nerfs, though. Still very strong. Like, sets up still a very strong lane for FPX. Just a bit more safety as well against a lot of uh, champions who want to go kill you. Also, as we've seen, the LPL teams will use Tom Kench to dive towers. You go in, you use the Devourer just as a tower yeah, aggro really reset. You have a lot of extra damage now in the lane phase. Uh, the Tom Kench Tongue Lash actually pairs super well with Varus. Very easy for them to combine and hit both of the harassment uh, abilities. Well, as we enter phase two, Hillisang finds his uh, signature picks in Pike and uh, Rakan taken off the table. There was a hover over Yasuo. That's now been removed from the pool as well. And we need to find out what this final ban from Fnatic is before we move into phase two. Jungler, as well as support, needed to be locked in for Fnatic with Gragas off the table. Elise and Lee Sin still open and available. They were the signature picks we we're anticipating for the junglers this series. Yeah, I'm not expecting anything new or exciting, uh, like a new or spicy from, from, from Broxa in terms of his jungle pick. I really like the, the bands here with Yasuo and Clint because they can be flexed in both solos. And I think Vladimir to try and uh, get scaling or Kale against GP saying, we know we will not have a global ulti, but we will then have something that can at least scale into the late game with us. And also buy some of that time in the team fight. The ultimate going to be very, very big here, uh, as we've seen already. <laughs> nice hover, even though they already have Kaisa. I will say, though, if this kill does not go top, I think it might be a mistake from FPX, because then you actually give over a lot of freedom to Fnatic to roam and make plays. I think it has to go top lane, and you try and leave it as an island, basically. It definitely doesn't feel like a Duel B champion. I would say that is 
definitely gonna be Gimgoon, but we shall see until the final pick. Yeah, he has played it once so far, uh, and that's about it. Alistar, though, Pike, Rakan, banned away. Tons of playmakers gone. Of course, expected again with Broxa that we get one of his comfort picks. This is a lot more like the Fnatic we want to see. AD carry bot, playmaking support, and then they have a strong early game jungler here that can pair up with the support to create chaos. A lot of options now being flicked through for Fun Plus. We'll get an answer of whether this Kale is going mid lane or top lane once we see the final lock in. Doing B has already run the Kale once in the group stage. Yeah. 5 1 and 3, and it looks like he'll do it again. Actually, if they wanted the scaling to come from the top side, it would have been that Vladimir pick. They would have locked that in because it's a good matchup into Gangplank later on. But here we go. We're going to get the Gnar. As we've seen, you can try and whittle him down as well. Again, how are they going to answer so many of these globals towards the bottom side when Doin B is on this Kale? Not going to have a lot to say about the mid lane priority, which has determined. Exactly. I think we're going to get a very different game from FPX early on. Like, they will not be as proactive with setting up these big plays bot lane. I think actually Fnatic has now gotten for them a, a very comfortable draft in terms of how they like to play the game. Tons of CC coming from support. They can actually play around bot side and leave Whippo alone top. This should be a game where Fnatic can dictate the early game around bot lane. Exactly. These are almost ideal champions uh, for what you would theorize for the Fnatic side. Let's see how they play out on the Rift. If they can even up our series here and take it 1-1. Well, the fans in Spain and everyone watching here in Europe wants to see that happen. And I'm, I'm hearing and I'm feeling flashbacks to the first half of groups and the second half of groups where Fnatic moved to those comfort picks, the playmaking support, something comfortable for Buipo and for Broxa. And we saw such a marked difference in their performance. Now we need to see it happen when the pressure is turned up against Fun Plus Phoenix to fish One of the big things for Fnatic, they're great when they have a clear game plan easy to execute, where they have playmaking champions for Broxa and for Hillisang. That's what they have in this game, so it's back to comfort for this team. Now just quickly, as we're loading up, I do want to take some time to look at the numbers between the first half of the group stage and the second half of that group stage, where so much criticism is given to the clutch performance from Fnatic and so much praise to their victories over SKT and RNG. And after seeing Fnatic lose game one with the Garen Yumi, and maybe you can argue the Rengar, do you know that that parallel storyline of the first half decision making versus second half decision making, it feels like it's coming back there, Kobe. Definitely agree. You can hear the crowd behind them as everybody's setting out for defensive openings here. Don't expect any sort of invades like we saw last time around. A lot of it determined by your level one of your champions. We are talking about it already. They want a much slower opening. And of course, one of the big players in terms of the early game, Broxa, he fought for those blue buffs in game number one. He was one of the difference makers. As we moved into the second round, Robin, you can see his kill participation, K plus A going from 0.7 to 5.0. Yeah, last game, you know, he was against an Olaf in the early game as Elise, so he's not winning that matchup. He didn't have a support to back him up because Yumi was stuck in the bot lane. So it made it very difficult for him to actually play the game without any lanes he could really play around. Delayed invade this time oh, from Fnatic. Hiding around the corner. Oh, if anybody's left behind, this is going to be problematic. Nemesis sticks in the mid lane. Gets the gold card into doing B. Okay, 3v3. Reckless, though. He's taking the buff. Is yeah. stepping into LWX. Reckless is not in sync with the team. He walks all the way through doing B. Now Broxa comes to help. Do FPX engage the flashes. There's the dash away. Tian goes for the body slam. Whoa. Flash. That's a flash forward. Fnatic are chasing Tian. They're looking for first blood, and they find it. Reckless picks it up on the Kaiser. Doing B forced to flash defensively. That looked crazy, but it comes out in Fnatic favor. It was crazy. That was ring around the Rosie here with the blue buff. In the end, Fnatic, even with Reckless by himself taking blue buff damage, they circle back around because. Tian is the only one who flashes order to try and focus that. They get him down first blood, and guess where it goes? The Kai'Sa into Reckless's hands, exactly where they want it. And actually looked like Reckless was almost caught out, and FPX could try and get onto him. Tian actually tried to body slam over the wall as well and start the fight. That's why he ended up dying. 
had to boil his flash. Now he is going to be spotted by this ward if he goes up to red buff. Broxa is taking his bot side camps. He's also spotted, so they have the information. This is the fight again. Looks like Reckless is caught out a bit, but Broxa is with him. And now a call has been made to go aggressive, but he's kind of the only member who can follow. Exactly. It's because everyone else hesitates on the other side of this blue buff. LWX never flashes over, actually. Uh, it's because they all kind of corralled themselves behind this wall. Regardless, though, focus. They were indeed fanatic. Looked at FBX in the eyes and said, what's your move, bro? And they managed to pick up first blood. They support Reckless in the play. He hasn't yet backed, and despite being under some pressure in the bottom lane, flashless, crisp, while Broxer with that ward from earlier, he's challenging the red buff. He's taking that. We know bot side, Varus Tom Kench will win early. Alistair is not really a champion before he gets a few levels under his belt. Whippo playing very aggressive top side. Of course, using strong early game off GP, and he knows my jungle is nearby. I can do this. Yeah, he knows because Broxa here tracking Tien. This is going to be a big Broxa game. Huge difference from last time around. Look what he's done with the early invade. You try and use that pressure to continue to keep it up with Lee Sin. You can just bully Gragas out of his own jungle, take the red buff here, and he's got complete seniority as well as far as the. Uh, Scuttle crabs as well. And I know the level one obviously went in favor of Fnatic. That makes it even worse right now for FPX. But this is why in the draft you were like, okay, what are they planning on doing here? They don't really have a solo lane who can like hard snowball on the TF or the GP. But they also, later on in the game, have a bot lane who will get attacked by multiple globals. So it's hard for them to actually win lane super hard and take down a turret. So FPX right now, fairly slow early setup with their composition, and that normally does not favor them. They actually want to play aggressive in the early game. All right, Hillisang is going to be aggressive now. Tien's coming in, no flash. Hillisang, flashless as well. He will get shut down. The kill is donated over to LWX. Right place at the right time. Yeah, I talk about this a lot where you as a jungler counter jungle your opponent so heavily. Brox is like, hey, this guy's got no camps left up, took his red buff, chased him out of his own jungle. The only object left for Tien to go for is going for a gank. It's like a forced gank here, but he makes it convert oh. on the bottom side, almost steals that one back away. Uh, and now only his camps are starting to respawn. He can go back over to his own side. But that's a moment that feels bad for Brox and for Fnatic, where right. Tien did not have a lot of options. And yet, the only, one of the only ones open is that bottom lane focus, which pays off here. And we have to assume this is a communication uh, problem, where Fnatic are maybe calling wrong where the jungler could be, uh, because there's no other reason really to try and take this 2v2 fight, unless you thought jungler is for sure not bot lane, because you didn't have any vision. So you must have felt very confident he was either in base or, or somewhere else. And you literally know he has to be bomb side of the map because Broxa just chased him out of Raptors, Red, and Krugs. They've got full wards on the top side, so they know that it has to be the case. Well, full kudos to the observers there for toggling the vision. Broxa kicked that Scryer's Bloom, didn't actually spot out Crisp. And Tian there by the tri bush. There is a control ward and there's a potential dive being set up. But this could be a 3v3 very quick. We have level six on uh, TF. Good thing, of course, with Ulti, he will spot the Gragas as well. Here, going. All right, there's the devour already used. Two man knocker, but one inside the belly. Gold card comes down. Crisp has gone low. Look at thick skin, does so much work. Nemesis is going low. This is completely botched from Fnatic. It's a 2v1 in favor of FPX. And Tian right now, he reads this. He knows they will dive bot lane with the early level six. We said it's going to be bot lane focus from Fnatic. They saw the Gragas with the ulti, but still felt confident they could go for it. It backfires. Tom Kench, good at defending against dives. Round two. All right, let's find what happens. The Sonic Wave doesn't find a target. The Kathian Rain will not have enough damage just yet. LWX is pushing forward. Piercing oh, arrow. Jumps oh, reckless oh, down. It's got no flash. LWX gets another. That's a defensive flash from Broxa. There's a red buff available to be secured. And LWX doesn't chase more. It could not get worse. Exactly how we read it. Chip select, though, as soon as they see the double globals, the Focus bottom side, they draft the denial. The Tom Kench comes up big, and here is Tien hovering behind the bottom side, waiting for the dive. And they have GP ult and everything, so they feel like they can do this, but it's some fairly tanky members, and it's a Tom Kench down here, so it's not an easy dive to execute. Round two is even worse, though. So here's another look at how they try and go in. Push the wave. All in. or nothing, man. <laughs> it is all or nothing. And they get nothing. Sonic wave misses there. They know they have to run out of the tower aggro then. The turnaround here. Crisp stays on the front line long enough to get the tongue lash. Relies on the gray health, allowing LWX to flash forward, finish off the kill on Reckless. And let's just give so much credit to this bot lane from FPX. They got criticized 
during the group stage for not performing as well as they could. But here, they get the early push, then they know there's going to become a big wave. We might get killed under this turret, but our jungler is here and we can outplay it. And they actually do. Multiple kills now for this virus. Four of them, he's going to get such a big lead. The confidence of this FPX team in their bottom lane. You set up the fish show where Dome is going, I'm going to be playing the Kale this time around. It's a very different game. You don't get the roams from Rise. You're going to have to outplay, and they make it happen. Dragon set up, though. Yeah, definitely the case. But it helps when Tian is spending so much time. He helped get the first kill of the game in FPX's favor with a fantastic gank in the bottom lane. He was there to respond to the counter gank, and we saw saw some of his stats from the group stage. I know I was memeing Raz a little earlier, but he's been praising Tian all day long, and Tian is showing up in game two. I just got to just double up on it, quick shot, because I completely agree. This is another case of when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Like, all options were taken away from him. Gets off just what FPX need with that support on bottom side. I think next up for Fnatic is Unleash Nemesis again. You must try and do the same thing you actually just did because you want to try and snowball this, but it's the obvious choice for you. This time around, though, try and invest a bit of vision into the enemy jungle on bot side first so you have full information of where Tian is. You can actually see if he's near bot side or not. If he's not near, then you pull the trigger with Tia Volta. You can kill the two guys down there fast enough before anyone can react on the side of FPX. I'm already a little bit fearful of the bottom side if I'm Fnatic. Uh, this is a four kill Varus now, <laughs> almost to a Blade of the Ruin King. And you gotta know, Tian is gonna be hovering bottom side because both teams are well aware of where that focus can take place. Well, both ultimates are available for Bwipo and Nemesis. And by the way, Bwipo has silently pulled up a 14 CS lead plus a wave in front of him of a Gimgu. We've not seen that matchup a lot. Similarly, the Twisted Fate and the Kale they're sitting about bang on even in this mid lane because all of the game has obviously been focused around that bottom lane where FPX have generated themselves a 700 gold lead. And the Blade of the Ruin King is completed versus just the ingredients for Reckless right now. And the window in the early game where enemy mid will use first TP back to lane is now gone for Fnatic. Uh, next time around, Doing B could have saved his TP. Just as I'm about to say the point, he actually decides to go back to lane. He wants to try and make sure he can get to his first item as quickly as possible. And they are doing Drake, so that's why he ends up TPing back. So he can push mid now and potentially go join his team. Fnatic can't then contest. It does mean, however, he can't answer a potential dive in the bottom lane. All right, so conceding the Dragon as well as some pressure in the middle lane. Uh, taking a look at Reckless and Hela saying they're going to be able to catch that wave. Every time Tian moves to a lane, I get nervous. And he goes in for a small engage here, but instantly gets turned around. Chain of Corruption already thrown down. So that's going to be a trade of ultimates. LWX for Hilly. We've already established 2v2. This bot lane from FPX, super strong. Then you add on four kills, of course, kind of helps a little bit. Uh, and now you also have stopwatch on your Tom Kench. So it gets even harder to actually go kill them. That's it, four kills making it even harder. That's the analysis we've been missing to Fischio. Glad Welcome I can deliver it. Back to the show. But then you know, if, five kills would be worse. What if Fnatic have Fnatic. to do? Do you want to see them shut down LWX? Like we talked about already, the TF, the GP, they've got the ultimates. We just saw a teleport back into that mid lane. but. There doesn't seem to be an opportunity presented that Fnatic are pulling the trigger on. It's extremely difficult right now to find an easy opening. Uh, normally, again, you want to push together and get deep vision on one side so you know enemy jungler is not there. And then you can threaten the play on bot side. Worst case, you just get the turret because you force them away from it and don't actually go for the kills. That is one way Fnatic can get some gold on Reckless. I don't know if going top is going to be an answer for them because they're already farming very well. Here's my idea for Fnatic. Uh, I really want them to try and use Nemesis Ultimate to actually attack Tien. You want to find this enemy jungler, find the Gragas. He is a possibility for a kill here. Uh, if you can get Broxa to invade with the extra global that they have because Doonby used the teleport on Kale back to mid, maybe that is an opening they can get. So it's going to be a fairly slow Herald here, but they know they have uh, Whippo sitting top, kind of going even with Gimgum. I think if Pix can go in and actually contest this, uh, at least make Fnatic rethink if they should actually kill the Herald or not. Well, Tian and Dune be are around. The wave seems to be pushing towards Bwipo top, so Gimgun may be able to respond. Nemesis, I don't think he's yet thrown down that destiny. Gimgun's about to gnaw out. Bwipo already eats the oranges. He's running for his life. Flash is available to him. Gimgun's about to make a gnaw, and the Rift Herald looks just about reset. Bwipo escapes with his life. Tian steps in and secures it. That's just bullying Fnatic out. Didn't get it, however. I mean, he got the, the kill on it, yes, but didn't get the eye. 
Let's see if they stick around. Right now on the minimap, you can see them playing defend the eyeball, but bottom side, the money off the turret plates going over to the FBX side. Tien's going for it. He rushes in. But this is just amazing for them because Fnatic, they feel like they they don't have any good options. So they start the Herald despite not having full push top lane. It was a very even uh, setup and they could actually trade against each other. They only had push mid when they started it and Tien was back in base. But this also means FX knows where the enemy jungler is. They know where TF is. So they get time to push in the winning bot lane and get a bunch of plates. Fnatic, they feel like... There's no easy play in the playbook right now, and FPX, they're in control. Yeah, it feels like a lot of the questions have answers, and it's definitely all credit here to FPX because of the way that they played the early game on bottom side, that they're able to come up with these answers. Hey, what are you going to do about Twisted Fate teleporting on your bottom side with Gangplank Ultimate? Well, Tom Kench, we're going to outplay. We have the Ver is Varus there. Ultimate to set up kills. Gragas is here. They're going for an offensive play. RMD, Chain of Corruption already comes out. Helisang actually will use Tian to taxi to the tower. But the Devour from Crisp comes in. Just another fantastic dive. Nearly 2,000 gold in the lead for FBX. It doesn't feel large at this point, but it's the way the lead is coming about. And now with the Rift Hail being thrown down, Tower First Blood being secured, a Mountain Drake in the back pocket, FBX are in absolute control this early game. Yeah, they're in full control, and they're not even playing their signature style because they have a more defensive scaling mid lane. Let's see bot lane. And if you're a fan of Fnatic, you should be worried because the signature style is being played, and it's not yet working. LWX has survived for now. Whipper completes the teleport. The counter barrage comes out. Defensive flash from Nemesis, and Whipper is running for his life. He is making his way forward. Got no flash available to him. Broxa manages to find Dewey B. How did you do that? Tian body slams over the wall. The chase isn't done yet. Whippo is looking for Gim Goon. Gim Goon's about to make an all out. He flashes away to safety. Fnatic is somewhat split. Hilly's looking for a target. Thus for one versus one. And the parlay sends Gim Goon away. What? Oh, they're re-engaging. Sang has gone far too deep, but the ultimate will buy just enough time. Tongue Lash available. That will tag one. Gim Goon comes over. No! Into the wall. The rest of Fnatic were maybe looking for a tower. They were not with their support. And Fnatic donate the seventh kill. Ended up splitting up here. Multiple members stayed in the bottom lane, chasing the Nar. And then Hillisang was like, great, we won the fight. I can maybe put a ward into the enemy jungle. Ended up getting caught out and giving up another kill here. Man, that kick from Broxa. That made my eyes go huge, Quickshot, because that was a Kale with ultimate available. Yet Fnatic burst him down with ult available before he can actually get it off. And I thought it was going to be a critical moment, but even given that, it's a one-for-one -one trade as Broxa went down and then Getting the straggler kill there on Hillisang at the end just means that they've got full control over River. There is no support back out here with early wards for Fnatic. So this could be very quick. Two mountains for FBX, which greatly enhances yeah. their group later, 20 minutes in. Let's see if Proxa can steal it. Not even going to try. I think the double mountain drake is so key here because late on in the game, Fnatic can try and split up the map leave the GP versus the Nart and have the TF in the other side lane. You know, he's full AD and actually abuse his ulti to then create a numbers advantage somewhere. But with the double Mountain Drake, the fact you're going to go Rage Blade on your AD carry, you're going to burn down this Nasha so fast if you're FPX. It exactly. It directly attacks one of Fnatic's win conditions, which is buying time, spreading, and trying to pressure. If you don't have that time to buy because FPX can just group on Baron and force so insanely fast with extra two damage, here we go. Oh, does Hillisang know how much he's bitten off? Four members of FPX coming to reply. I think he figured it out at the end. <laughs> Ah, I have gone too far. <laughs> it went too far, and Hillisang concedes the fifth death of the game. This is a little bit of Hillisang on brand. Coin flip player at times has been known to overcommit. And now there's a gold card landing onto Gimgun. Reckless will chase forward with the killer instinct and continue oh, to chase. Oh, he slowed down. Can't get in range. That boomerang play does so much. The re-engage. Tian and FPX snipe Reckless under the tower. They get the top tower. They extend the gold lead. And this game is already feeling over. It's all going crashing down for Fnatic quick shot. FPX full steam ahead once again. Their duo side gets the top tower. They're focusing towards a dive on Nemesis and Broxa now as well. Oh man, run away, run away. FPX, the, the debate, the discussion, which FPX are we going to see? The summer split, the team that was one win away from the most dominant LPL team in history 
or the group stage one that had very questionable plays. I just want to quickly remind everybody how many international games the Fun Plus Phoenix players have played. Before today started, it was seven, including the two now. Nine international games played a piece across the board, and they are not skipping a beat in their first quarterfinal. For everyone counting, by the way, there was a tiebreaker in groups, so those are all this year. There we go. <laughs> Unbelievable stuff for Fun Plus. And Obviously, now it's up to them to extend this lead further yeah. and be one win away from match points. And we already talked about how this draft from them, from, from them are, it's very different from what we normally see. Uh, and it's just fantastic to see them actually execute it again. Fnatic probably regret not, you know, disengaging, mm. not actually committing to the dive when they saw the Gragas there. Uh, but that kind of started the whole thing for FPX here. Let's see what happens around mid. TF has used his ulti. Yes, indeed. Gold card has been crime for Nemesis. I'm waiting for the targets. This is a 5 v4 for the time being. Broxa oh, has spotted. the potential to flank, but he has been spotted out, as you mentioned, Deficio. And now Gimgu, no flash available, but he does have the Mega Knock. Manages to find one to Heli. Heli will, however, find Crisp. And here goes the Kale ultimate, but there's so much applied damage. That's Nemesis already down. Helisank follows shortly thereafter, and the rest of FBX, they take down the tower. Abyssal Voyage will send Tian to the back line. The Reckless and Brox are running for their lives. Yeah, Fnatic literally cannot fight FBX grouped up as five. You are never killing that Varus. It is a level 11 super fed Varus with not only a Tom Kench, but also a Kale next to him. And that is FBX just moving ahead as five, completely bullying this team. In fact, they have to play their team with the spread. But again, it's similar to last game where because FBX got so many of these outplays early, because yep. they got so much of this lead early, Fnatic cannot get that game plan online. And once again, we sit in a situation where we hit 20 minutes. FBX have killed multiple out of turrets. They have so much map control and Fnatic, they've only gotten one. So it's almost impossible for them to actually split up the map because their minimap at this point, it's tiny. If FPX decides we're going to push down mid and go to whatever jungle we want, top or bot, they just get full map priority. And Fnatic then have to play super defensive, but they don't want to play defensive with their draft. All right, again, they use the Tom Kench Devour. Then Look at Tien here. After Kim Goon goes in and actually trades ultis with Hillisang, we're just kind of sitting and waiting. Feels like nothing huge is going to happen. He goes in, he gets a kill ulti, and now look at the Gragas with the ulti, knocks in uh, the Fnatic members, and Nemesis goes down. Absolutely destroys them, splits them up, and then it is easy to continue pushing forward. And this, the ramifications of this team fight are huge, because we talked about the double mountain. This has opened up a pathway straight for Baron Control now. Fnatic have no towers oh, to defend mid anymore, so it's going to be very easy for FPS. <laughs> That was bold. Set it up. That was bold, Whippo. He sidesteps the Gragas ultimate, takes just enough time to throw a little dance of taunt. Uh -huh. uh, didn't quite recognize the animation. But 002, yes, he's got an advantage right now over his lane opponent, but his team is down 5,000 gold, Kobe. Quick shot. You got to enjoy the small things in life. Right now, the game is looking grim. But yeah, you sidestep a nice ultimate oh there. Yeah. Get your taunt in. Yeah, that's got to be the, the, the move, right? But take a look at this bottom lane. 604 for LWX. Rageblade, Blade Rune King, Zeal, and Shard completed. Only a moment ago did Reckless complete his Rageblade. So nearly a full item behind. Actually, now it is a full item behind his lane opponent. And then you've got Crisp, 009 on this time. Can't just been everywhere he needs to be. And let's assume Fnatic will not be allowed to split up the map and try and catch people That's with TF ulti. They will probably safe call. Yeah, they'll probably be forced to actually five versus five uh, and try and win that way. When I look at Tom Kench and Kale, I'm obviously looking at two champions who can stop someone from dying, but only either if they're in melee range for the Tom Kench or obviously in ulti range of Kale. So Brox's ulti could end up being the deciding factor here. If he's able to actually separate, uh, separate a carry from the rest of the team, Fnatic might be able to kill him instantly and they can gain a numbers advantage, but it's really hard to do. Well, fans viewing at home, go grab that picture of thank Mr. Broxa. If you want them to come back in this game, it may be on his shoulders. Cannon Barrage bought some time and Baron's been interrupted. Again, though, this is what they have to do. Fnatic are spreading the map. You see Twi Twisted Fate on bottom side, now using the ultimate to join. All right, where is Broxa? Helisang stepping forward. He's got the ultimate available, moves into the pit. So, so now with BX, they've secured the Baron, but at what cost? Broxa is all 
already down. There is no thanking Broxa. There is no thanking Hillisang. Baron is deleted by FPX. And we highlighted the double mountain Drake earlier. The Varos who could just burn it down in no time. So when you are potentially setting up a flank here and the enemy team is stuck in the Baron pit, well, you have to do it so quickly because it dies wait, wait. so fast. And now, let's see if uh, they can do something crazy here. All right, Nemesis got the gold card primed. He's looking onto Gimgun, who's a little tired, mini -nah. But the piercing arrow from LWX sends him legendary. Nine, zero, and four. This Phoenix is truly flying and on the verge of 2-0. Double kill for LWX. Ten kills this game. And FPX are looking at shutting Fnatic down. Oh, they're looking at it all right, Quickshot. I think that has been done. FPX here teleporting back out. They want to end the game on this Baron buff. And of course, if FPX close this out, Invictus Gaming are waiting for them in the semi-finals. The much talked about LPL, the fall of RNG, what form would IG and FPX bring to the quarterfinals? Well, I tell you what, it's terrifying today in Madrid. And 15 kills to three, nearly 10,000 gold up. FPX are on the brink of closing this game out and shutting down Europe's second seed. Now, what defense can they muster? The Broxa Dragon's Ooh, Rage kit still has power. LWX gets devoured for now, buys enough time to turn it around. Helisan gets the pulverized onto Gim Goon, and here comes Tian. Broxa running for his knife. Nemesis gets shut down. 11 0 4 for LWX. The inhibitor still stands because it's the kills that Fun Plus wants. Buepo will get run down by Gim Goon. He runs a few seconds longer. Finally, the inhibitor falls. Now the Nexus target. Uh, the Nexus is the target for FPX, 18 kills to three. It has been a slaughtering of Fnatic members. And Fun Plus Phoenix are one game away from the first World Semi-Finals. Game one, FPX control mid, use it to tower dive bot lane and win that way. Game two, they go for more defensive draft. They want to scale in the solo laners and they just want to have a more defensive bot lane. It's Fnatic who's trying to dive them. They outplayed with Tomkins, Vars, and Gragas. They get a huge lead, and suddenly, Fnatic's playbook, nothing there. They had really no good option after they fell behind from that tower dive. This series has been insane from FBX so far, and especially I have just enjoyed Chris' play. A lot of people were critiquing him through the group stages, but he had the offensive looks to find the engages for FBX in game number one, and he had the defensive looks here. Everybody is going to have their eyes on LWX. He allows them to survive. He stays in for the extra tongue lash on Tom Kench to get that kill on the exit on Reckless as well. I think that he has just been the MVP so far remind in this series me, for me. Remind me when I've heard the story before, Fnatic go up against a LPL squad in an elimination match, get crushed 25 minutes in game one, get crushed 25 minutes in game two, and on the brink of elimination going into game three. I'm not talking about Fun Plus <laughs> Phoenix, I'm talking about how Fnatic were eliminated from the World Finals at the hands of Invictus Gaming. The, the ghosts of the past have to be on Fnatic's minds because these games have not been close. What you're saying is there's no possible way a team could come back from down 0-2. <laughs> there's absolutely no way that a team could do it. Their opponents, Fun Plus, are up on Cloud9 right now, and Fnatic are in do-or-die mode. League of Legends is celebrating 10 amazing years with a limited time anniversary gifts for the players. All you need to do is play one game to unlock each step of the gifting process. Offers expires the 19th of November, so be sure to hit the rift to unlock your gifts. Last week, we saw for those of you League's newest champion, Senna. There's a sentence. If you're hankering to play, she'll be live on the PBE on the 29th of October, and if you missed it, here's how she made her return. Thank you very much, Kobe and Fisher.